Mr. Chairman, and thank you to all of you this morning. Very interesting. I wanted to ask a, a question, a couple questions here about HARP, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. Uh, several of you at the table have a little bit of a piece here. As you know, this is located up in Alaska. It's currently funded by the Air Force Research Lab. It was formerly funded by the Office of Naval Research. One of the prime customers is DARPA, uh, which is currently running experiments at the facilities here. So uh, questions to, to several of you this morning. I'm told by the president of the University of Alaska that the Air Force has pulled its support for the facility and they're taking steps to, uh, to demolish it or take it down uh, this summer. He's making the argument that, uh, that there is other opportunities for us and uh, is trying to find a path where the university might be able to take title to the facility. I, I'd, I'd like to start with you, Dr. Prabhakar. I understand that um, a lot of folks here on the committee probably don't understand what HARP does. I think most Alaskans don't really know what HARP does or why the agency is involved in it. Uh, so a very brief explanation and then a more direct question. Would you be disappointed or would you lose something if, if HARP were to go away? Uh, Senator Markowski, as, as I think you know, uh, one of our programs has been using the HARP facility for the research that, that uh, it's pursuing. Uh, and my understanding is that we did get value out of that interaction. Um, the, the P in DARPA is projects, and uh, we're not in the business of doing the same thing forever. And so it's very naturally, as we conclude that work, uh, we're going to move on to other topics. So I, it's not, a, it's not a, uh, an ongoing need uh, for DARPA, despite the fact that we had actually gotten some good value out of the, the, that infrastructure in the past. Understood. Then, uh, to, to uh, Dr. Walker and, and Mr. Schaefer then, it, Dr. Walker, your agency is currently running the facility. Um, uh, I've mentioned that it's our understanding through the president of UAF that, that the plans are to move forward and, and demolish the facility this summer. So the question to you is, is that accurate? Can you explain why? And then uh, perhaps to both you and Mr. Schaefer, is there any benefit in exploring a potential relationship with the University uh, of Alaska to, to perhaps take over the HARP? Yeah, thank you, Senator. It, the Air Force has uh, gotten great value out of HARP in the past. We, uh, we, we took it over from the Navy and managed it and actually did a number of uh, experiment campaigns up there and uh, have finished our, our work that we're interested in doing up there. We've. Uh, Moving on to other ways of uh, managing the ionosphere, which the HARP was really designed to do, was to inject energy into the ionosphere, be able to actually control it. And, uh, but that work is, has been completed. Uh, the Air Force uh, has maintained the site for other government agencies to use for several years now. And uh, with DARPA completing their project, that's our last government customer that we have in the site. We have uh, put out a call government-wide for other agencies that had interest in, uh, in in managing the site or, or taking it over, and including going out to uh, academia and, uh, and seeing if there was any interest there. Uh, we have gotten interest from the university uh, in Fairbanks. However, the, uh, the, the, the interest we have is that they will run it if we fund it, which is uh, unfortunately in this uh, uh, fiscal environment we're in right now, this is not an area that we have any need for in the future and don't see that it would be good use of Air Force s and funds in the future. So our, our position has been that uh, if there's not somebody who wants to take over the, uh, the management and the funding of the site, then the Air Force has no future need and that we do plan to, uh, to uh, do a, a, a dismantle of the, uh, the system in the future after we make appropriate notifications. When you say in the future, do you anticipate that it would be this summer then, or would there perhaps be more time for the university to try to figure something out? We would prefer to start this summer. Uh, we would like to get the critical equipment out of the site before the, the winter. The, the harsh winter in Alaska uh, does lead to a, a very costly winterization uh, to maintain the uh, site, and we'd like to avoid that if we can. Okay, D Mr. Schaefer, if you have any comments on that? Yes, ma'am. Um, 
So I'm torn on this because my background is as an atmospheric scientist, and I think the facility is, is just a world-class facility. That said, uh, we've worked very hard with the Air Force, uh, with the Office of Science and Technology Policy over the last 18 to 24 months to find another sponsor for this because it really, uh, as you've heard the, the other uh, people at the table, we, the department, have gotten the research value out that we need for the facility. We've also worked with University of Alaska Fairbanks to get some other person to pick up the long-term, just pure scientific research that HARP, uh, HARP offers the promise of. But with all the other issues and problems and challenges facing the department at this time, we just don't see that that investment over a long-term period is where we would prioritize our investment. So we support, we've been working with other agencies, uh, trying to get uh, agencies like National Science Foundation, <coughs> Department of Commerce, who runs the National uh, Ocean and Atmospheric uh, Administration, to pick up the HARP facility. No one else wants to step up to the bill, ma'am.